This video has been made with the purpose of education and awareness of real crimes and there is no disrespect intended to anyone. This is to help promote truth and justice for anyone who has been a victim of crime. What I'm about to report is what I have researched online and I will welcome any corrections should they be required. Hello there little Berry True Crime fans, Eri Berry here. Great to have you with me again. I'm a little bit peeved to be honest because I have just filmed this, just filmed this case, right? And I found out that Audacity was not picking up on my microphone. I had to restart it. And I found that my camera was being a bit funny. So yeah, I need to film this again. I have a fan going at the moment again, I like, like last time. I really do apologize if it gets picked up on in this. Um, I need to keep myself cool. It's so hot. Um, but um, that's kind of relevant to what we're talking about today. Today we're going to go to a place in America called Fall River in Massachusetts. And we're going to be talking about a woman called Marie Joseph, who was a 36-year-old mother of five, who was a housekeeper at a hotel in Rhode Island. She also did voluntary housekeeping. She babysat for her neighbor's kids. She was generally a generous loving person who would do anything for anybody she was bright and bubbly and vivacious and people described her as someone who was always cheerful and when you look at pictures of her and you see her smile she just she definitely appears to be someone who is always fun loving and full of life someone who was always bubbly and you know someone i would love love to have as a friend in the summer of 2001 it was like today, it was pretty hot. And what do people do when it's hot? They go to the beach or they go to the pool. And it was no different for Marie Joseph and her neighbor and their family. There was a pool called the Vietnam's Veteran Memorial Pool at a place called Lafayette Park, which also had like a basketball court and other recreational facilities. This particular pool um, had a yellow water slide. It was just a family fun communal pool. That afternoon, they went along to the pool. Marie had a nice lie down on a lounger and um, there were people frolicking around the pool. At one point, Marie decided she would go into the pool and there is actually a picture of her holding one of the neighbor's children. As well as Marie in this picture, take note of the water. There was something wrong that day with the water. It was like milky almost as if you'd mixed milk or chalk in with it. It didn't look dirty exactly. And the lifeguards, there were seven lifeguards on duty that day. They tested the pH and they said it was normal and it was suitable enough for people to swim. People continued to use the facilities. They continued to go on the water slide. People were in at the deep end, which was 12 foot deep at the deepest or at the shallow end. The staff couldn't work out why this water was so murky. The pumps and the filters seemed to be working fine. There didn't seem to be any particular reason, so they just, you know, allowed it to carry on business as usual. At some point, Marie decided she would go on the water slide. She went down just after the nine-year-old boy from next door went down the slide and she accidentally knocked him as she came off the slide. She said sorry to him and that was that. And at the end of the day, when the staff were closing up, they noticed that there were some belongings left on one of the loungers. These belongings were Marie Joseph's. It was her purse, her wallet, her phone, and other bits and pieces. So it was like a full kit that somebody would bring along with them, their towel even, all sitting there on a lounger. The staff, rather than alert anybody to, hang on, someone has potentially gone missing or left valuables here. We need to get in touch with the person. They took the stuff and probably just put it in lost property and said nothing, did nothing, left it. This was on the night of the 26th of June, 2011. The pool was opened on the 27th and again on the 28th. The water was still murky. The water was still not giving up any secrets as to why it was the way it was. The pH was still normal, so it was business as usual. That night, two young boys, I think they were only about 13 or 14, decided they would climb the fence and have a, a late night dip. I'm not sure what security they had there, but by the by. As the boys were playing around in the water, they noticed that there was something else in the water with them. Something had come up to the surface that they hadn't seen. They swam over and they had a look and they realized it was a dead body. The boys were obviously panicked and traumatized. They alerted the authorities. They quite happily owned up to what they did, but 
this was really distressing for them. There was a dead body in this water and it was Marie Joseph who had last swum in that water two days prior. How had Marie Joseph's body been in that water for two days and nobody knew? That water was so cloudy, so opaque that you couldn't see the bottom. You couldn't even see halfway. That picture of Marie at the poolside there, and you can also see somebody else in the background. As it goes further down past the waist, you can't see anything. Marie was actually at the, the deep end of that pool, at the 12 foot deep section for two days. And that's why nobody saw her. But how had she drowned? And why on earth did the neighbors who went with her that day not notice that she'd gone and not taken her belongings? Why didn't they alert anybody? An autopsy revealed that Marie did in fact die from drowning. It was also found that Marie couldn't swim. She had gone down the, the slide and the slide went into the deep end. Now, unless you can touch the bottom, unless you can swim or you can quickly grab the side of the pool or a flotation device, if you can't swim, then you're gonna need help. It was then found that there was some surveillance footage and the footage at the point that Marie went down the slide was looked at. Now, courtesy of um, Investigation Discovery, True Nightmares documentary, I'm going to show the footage. The footage shows her coming down the slide, splashing into the water, she accidentally knocks into the little boy. She goes under the water, back up again, and then she goes under the water and she doesn't come back up. That was the point that she drowned. The nine-year-old boy, the nine-year-old neighbor was the only one to spot that. And he did actually alert one of the lifeguards who seemed to dismiss him, saying, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do a check in a little while, don't worry. I'm sorry, but if anyone says that somebody has gone under the water and not resurfaced, especially when it's murky and you cannot see the bottom of the pool, you take it seriously. This is a life we're talking about. A drowning expert was consulted for the documentary series, True Nightmares. And what he said about people who drown, especially if they go under the water and then experience distress and then take in water, they don't tend to hugely panic. And don't forget if Marie was under that murky water and flailing her arms around about the place and she was sinking further and further down, nobody would have noticed. She wouldn't have been able to come up to scream for help. And if she'd panicked, she would have taken in more water. And the more water you take in, the less air you have, you're going to sink to the bottom. And that's where her body was for two days. How could this happen with seven lifeguards on duty? Four people were sacked and two people, two supervisors were charged and they admitted to negligence which is the crime we're talking about today, because this is a true crime channel, the crime of negligence. Even if you, if you cut corners, if you go against regulation, these are disastrous consequences and the regulations are there precisely pr to preserve life and safety. The water being so murky was the Achilles heel here. It turned out that the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Pond did not have a vacuum pump that they would have needed to have cleaned out the pool, but that's not the point. A bit more further back, if we go back to the previous year, it gives more of an insight into what actually happened. They decided, I believe, to save money out of um, laziness, I suppose, and negligence. That the pool that, you know, the actual pool itself with no water in it had been left empty since the previous year and all the leaves and debris and goodness knows what else was just left at the bottom of the pool and it should have been cleaned out and actually thoroughly cleaned before being refilled and it has to be pumped through the system for quite some time i think for about a week or 10 days before anyone can actually use it they decided not to clean the bottom of the pool and just leave all the crap in the bottom of it okay they pumped clean water into it and thought the filters will take care of the debris. Yeah, right, the filters failed. The water was then left for a week, not pumped, not filtered, nothing. The filters were then cleaned and they were working again, but the water was tainted. It was full of all kinds of rubbish and bacteria. And that's what caused the murky water. At one point, a member of staff decided to add chlorine manually to the pool to make sure there was enough in there to kill any bacteria, but it didn't make any difference. That water being murky is 
an actual essential point of swimming pool regulations which says the bottom of the pool must be swept and any debris removed at the end of every single day and they must be able to see the bottom because there could be anything down there anyone could have drowned down there and there could be things like if somebody loses their goggles and what if that gets into the filtration system what if that causes it to fail they need to be more vigilant about these things because it could be something innocuous like just an item falling to the bottom of it or it could be a person drowning in the bottom of the pool which unfortunately happened on this occasion if the water had been cleared the lifeguards would have seen her they would have been able to go in and they could have saved her i'm actually amazed that her neighbors didn't notice that she wasn't there and, and were concerned for her especially because her belongings were still there I, I'm amazed that nobody reported her missing because if they had, the first place they would have looked was the pool. They, they probably would have gone, hang on, hang on, the pool's murky and Maria's missing. What if she's... That would have been just a, a normal logical conclusion about the water being murky. Can you see the bottom note? Is Maria down there? She had eventually floated to the surface purely because when you decompose, you actually decompose from the inside out and methane gas builds up inside your body, which would eventually float her to the surface so whenever a, a drowning victim or someone who's at sea um, even if they haven't drowned if they've been in the water for a while they often are quite bloated because the gas building up in them would cause them to float to the surface the gas wouldn't be able to dissipate as much as it would if it were in the air marie's five children filed a a, a suit against the company and that they, they were awarded an out of court settlement is this a case should it really have been a case of manslaughter especially the lifeguard who ignored that little boy swimming pools such a, and other recreational facilities like amusement park rides or um, things like climbing frames and stuff they all have hazards and they all have to have ways of mitigating those hazards and that's why regulations are in place in a swimming pool understandably the main concern is drowning when i used to go to swimming pool years ago i've been for a long time when i was a kid we used to take the wristbands off our wrists or our ankles that we had um for our lockers and drop them in the deep end of the pool and we challenge each other to be able to swim down and grab the wristband or we'd race to see who could get there first and even from standing on the side looking down into the deep end which was 12 feet deep you could see the wristband and even if you couldn't see it clearly because the water's moving around as soon as you as soon as you enter the water you can see it even without goggles and just your eyes open you can see it and i had bad vision and i could still see it people at marie's wake obviously they were just so they were devastated but people spoke just how cheerful and lively she was someone even said they wanted to be more like her and i can understand that because she does come across as being very bright and bubbly and loving life kind of person and i think we would all love to have that cheer in our lives that that one person that picks us up if we can all be as happy as marie joseph i think the world would be a happier place so i think what we can take away from this is just be more like marie be more happy try and find the happiness in your life she was a housekeeper she was a mother of five she did voluntary work so she wasn't in life for any kind of material gain or money she loved people she loved being with people she loved doing what she did and she was just generally a happy happy person now the pool was closed for a full year and it was actually completely rebuilt so the entire pool was extracted and the pool size and shape was roughly the same but they actually changed the depth so it was no longer 12 feet at the deepest it was actually five foot six at the deepest so they actually more than halved that deepness also the requirement was to check the bottom of the pool every 90 minutes not just at the end of the day every 90 minutes accidents do happen especially in hazardous environments like this that are supposed to be there for people's enjoyment but you have to try and lessen the risks as much as possible you're never going to be able to eliminate them if everybody had done their jobs right and this still had happened it would have been a freak accident that nobody could have prevented or been able to stop but it's difficult to stop or prevent a drowning like this if the water were crystal clear because anybody would have been able to see her down there and be able to help her. That's why water has to be clear in a swimming pool. So anyway, Little Berries, this is a short one today. It's not a murder, but it is a case of someone dying as a result of negligence laziness people can't be bothered doing their job properly people cutting corners wanting to prioritize money over the value of life seriously did they honestly think that yeah it'd be fine 
murky water, can't see below about a foot or two. It's 12 foot deep at the at the bottom of the pool. Yes, somebody reported somebody going under the water not coming back, but yeah, it's fine. I am so pleased that there were criminal charges brought on this occasion. I really, really was. It should never have happened at all. And can I just say, if you can't swim, unfortunately Marie Joseph couldn't, if you can't swim and you end up going into a, a part of a pool where you feel that you know you would need help let somebody know get a flotation device so in closing off this video i'd like to finish by saying thank you thank you thank you so much to all of my subscribers or even if you're not a subscriber thank you for watching if you're not a subscriber please considering instead of becoming a subscriber it would really help me out but also you know you you'll know where my channel is if you ever want to see any more i'd love to get to that 1000 subscriber mark because i'd love to start monetizing and turning this into a business but what i would like to do eventually is launch membership and patreon as well that's where i would like to get the bulk of any of my income to keep doing this i'd like to be able to do more things for people on patreon to give them more videos and more stuff because i don't want people to just become a member for the sake of it or just become a patreon for the sake of it uh, I would like to be able to give more to people. You guys are my customers. You you guys are my clientele. Tell me what you want from this channel. What what would make you want to come back? What would make you want to subscribe and want to recommend my channel? And even if there isn't anything that would make you want to do that, tell me what I can do to make this a better channel for you. I really would appreciate your input and help and feedback. If you've got Facebook, if you've got Twitter, please shout me out on there. I'd be very grateful. If you if you yourself have a community page on on um, on YouTube, please, I'd appreciate it if you could share this for me. The wider the audience, it doesn't matter how good the, the video is, the wider the audience, if more and more people see it, then more and more people will know that they're the channel's here and they can subscribe if they want but thank you so much i appreciate that very very much and i'll see you later little berries thank you bye bye